Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark Anderson for Kellogg Community College. Uh, today we're going to look at equations containing fractions and these uh, fractions are going to be a little tricky because sometimes the numbers and the denominator will be fractions or binomials with fractions in them. Well what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about the three steps up here and actually a fourth step which I call step zero because what I want to do is kind of like let you know what you should think about these problems here and how to do them. Now on the left side of the green line, I want to um, tell you about like what you should have in your head. You know, like what should be in the back of your mind as you do these problems. Because the first step that you should look at is in the denominator, you should see like, are there any x's in the denominator? And in this case there isn't. So what's good about that is that there's not going to be any excluded values. Um, the first step is to find a common denominator. and in, in the denominator here, we've got a 2, 3, and a 6, and the common denominator of 2, 3, and 6 is 6. Now, I would strongly recommend, um, instead of some professors who might say, oh, you're going to you know, get a common denominator on anything, then put them together, and then get rid of the denominator, there's actually a better way to do this. It's to multiply everything by that denominator. So on both sides, you would multiply by the 6. Now, the thing is, is that... Um, there's uh, this is going to simplify your work a lot because as I distribute the 6 inside these two binomials so I've got 6 whoops I got 6 times x over 2 minus 6 times 2 thirds and I've got a lot here I've got 6 times 5 6 what we can do is simplify this out. So six, three divided, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So th Whoops, that's a little weird, 3. So this is 3x. I've got 6 divided by 3 is 2. So that makes minus 4. And then I've got 6 divided by 6, which is going to be 1. So 1 times 5 is 5. And now we can solve for x. We're going to add 4 to both sides, so 3x is equal to 9 and then divide both sides by 3, x is equal to 3. And since we didn't have any x's in the denominator, what's good about that is that we won't have any uh, excluded values. So your answer is 3, and you can plug that back into the problem. 3 halves minus 2 thirds is 5 sixths, and you can check that on any, any, um, any good calculator. For the problem number two, we'll have some common denominators of 2, 10, and 5, and there's no danger numbers or excluded values because there's no x's in the denominator. So we're going to multiply everything by 10. And now instead of me writing parentheses and 10's around it, I'm just going to multiply a 10 by everything because that's just you know cutting one step from our process here. And I probably should draw a line just so things don't get confused. So if I multiply everything by 10, I can now do some simplification using our uh, rules of you know, whole number uh, simplification. 10 divided by 10 is 1, so 1 times 2x plus 3 is just 2x plus 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so 5 times 1 is 5. I should probably put a little 5 up here to show that's where the 5 came from. 10 divided by 10 is 1, and 1 times 4x plus 2 is 4x plus 2. There we go. And then 10 divided by 5 is 2. So 2 times 3, there's a little time symbol there, 2 times 3 is 6, and that's what's going to be subtracted. Now what we do is, you know, combine some term like terms here. So I got 2x minus 2 is equal to 4x minus 4. So what we'll do next is we are going to now uh, move the 4 and move the 2 um, together. Uh, so I want to move the 4x to the left, so that would give me a negative 2x. I'm just going to show a little arrow drawing to the left there. I'm going to move the 2 to the right there, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and that's going to give me a negative 2 to this side. Divide both sides by negative 2. Oh, <laughs> there's a little, little typo there. Um, okay, so the negative 2x divided by negative 2 is just x, and negative 2 divided by negative 2 is just 1. So my answer is 1, and um, I actually have uh, the answer. There's no excluded value, so as long as I did my calculations right, I should be okay. If I plug the 1 back into the problem, which I would then get 5 tenths minus 1 half, 
is equal to 6 tenths minus 3 fifths, I do get an answer of 0 equal to 0. So this checks out perfectly. In problems 3, 4, and 5, let's do some work here looking at the lowest common denominator. In this problem, the lowest common denominator is 2x, come on, pen, 2x minus 3. Now, one of the things about this problem is that now that there is an x in the denominator, you have a danger number. You have a number that you could plug in to this x for problem number 3 and get a division of 0 error. Uh, that number in particular is going to be positive 3 halves. Now, I, we've been playing this game for a long time in our chapters and work together, um, which is basically when does the denominator hit the ground, and this is back in the factoring chapter. So um, your skill of knowing the opposite of that number divided by the first number is a really quick way to find out what the danger number is. But if you couldn't find the danger number um, in your head like that, you can go 2x minus 3 is not supposed to be 0. Because if 2x minus 3 is 0, then what you have is a division of 0 error. Moving the 3 to the other side, you get 2x is equal to 3. And then if you divide both sides by 2, there you get your x cannot be equal to 3 halves. So whether you do it in your head or whether you do it by setting your denominator not equal to 0, um, you're going to get a danger number, um, and you're going to get the danger number of the same one. Um, so in problem 3, we're going to multiply top and bottom by 2x minus 3. And at this moment, I want to highlight that um, some of you out there might be saying, like, oh, man, uh, this looks a lot like cross multiplication. Well, this, this is what cross multiplication is. Um, we're multiplying both sides by both denominators. Even though this denominator is 1, we wouldn't write it. But this is cross multiplication. Um, and the reason why I teach it this way rather than just saying, oh, cross multiply everything is when you look at a problem like number four, if you're not savvy enough to move the two to the other side, you can't use cross multiplication. Cross multiplication only works in problems three and five when the problem is set up that way. And again, yes, you could modify number four to actually work with cross multiplication, but you may not see that. All right, so we're going to cross off the two X minus threes, and that's going to give me 20. And on the other side, we will distribute the 4 to the 2x, so that's 8x minus 12. And then we'll move the 12 to the other side, so 32 is equal to 8x. Ah. All right, I'm really having some pen problems there. Let me try that again. 32 is equal to 8x. Shoot. Shoot, I am having some pen problems here. And then we're going to divide everything by 8. So if I do that, x is going to be equal to 4. Now, x is equal to 4. It does not violate with the danger number over there, so um, the answer's right. I could also plug it back into my original equation over here, so I could have 20 over 8 minus 3 equals 4, so 20 divided by 5 is 4. So that works out fine. Okay, so in here, um, and I do want to show someone doing this problem, like a, this is a curtain here to show you that you can do the problem two ways. So let's assume that you don't actually see that 2 should be moved to the 3 and say, okay, the lowest common denominator is x and x cannot be equal to 0. Okay, fine, we got that out of the way. So we're going to multiply everything by x. If we multiply everything by x, what we have now is 2x, and then these x's simplify, so we got plus 7 is equal to 3x. Then we move the 2x to the other side, so 7 is equal to x, and there's our answer for that because 3x minus 2x is just 1x. Now I will show you that you could do this problem another way. You could have moved the, you know, the 2 to the other side you know, at the start of the problem, which would give you 7 over x is equal to 1. Then if you multiply both sides by x, you get an answer of 7 is equal to x. So whether you see that or not, it doesn't matter for the final scope of the problem. The problem is right, and if you plug in 7, you get 2 plus 7 sevenths equals 3, or 2 plus 1 equals 3. Hmm, cool. Now for the last problem. This is where all the cross multipliers will want to say, but I cross multiplied. Yeah, but have you been cross multiplying, you know, throughout your life and then not realize why it's working or how it's working? This is kind of why cross multiplication is frowned upon in some of the lower levels of math where we ask you to get... Um, uh, you know, we ask you to look at proportions. Um, so get back to the heart of the problem. The lowest common denominator is x plus 2, x plus 1. And as we discussed in earlier videos, you can't just add 1 to one of the, one of the denominators there and make it an x plus 2. That's an illegal step because this is a protected binomial. 
the danger numbers are going to be negative 2 and negative 1. I wish my pen wasn't malfunctioning. Negative 2 and negative 1. Those are the two danger numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to rock out and we're going to just do some simplification. So that crosses off with that. So the 4 times x plus 1 is 4x plus 4. And then we're going to cross off these x plus 1s and this is going to give me 3x plus 6. And then we just solve for x. And what's great about this is if I move the 3x over here to the 4x, 4x minus 3x is just x, and 6 minus 4 is 2. Check it out. x is equal to 2. Wow, that's great. So that, my friends, is the end of that. This is the five problems. And uh, the next five will be slightly more difficult. But thank you for watching. And uh, uh, again, uh, if you've got questions, just shoot me an email through your KCC email um, uh, address, and we can address those from the book. Thanks.